everyone. Um, hope you guys are staying safe and healthy still. I miss you all so much, but we're gonna do a little bit of yoga together today. Um, yoga has definitely been something that's kept me sane during this crazy weird time. Um, got me moving a little bit, so just want you guys to do some with me, kind of get your mind and body working a little bit instead of glued to a computer screen, even though you're probably watching me on a computer screen or phone, so I guess I didn't think that one through. But either way, I'm glad you guys are doing some yoga with me. So today, one thing I'm going to emphasize is what's called a chaturanga. So a chaturanga is kind of a transition you use to go from a standing position to a position on your hands and knees. So I'll show you it. You can either do it with me or you can just watch the first time and then we're gonna do it again. All right, so you're gonna come to your feet. And you're gonna plant your hands. When you plant your hands, you're gonna step back to a high plank. When you're in a high plank, make sure that your body's kind of shifted forward, your tummy is tucked in super tight and your spine is really long and sturdy. And then from there, you're gonna go to a mid plank. So mid plank, you, um, Bend your elbows and make sure that your spine is still long and then come up to an upward dog. Flip your toes and then look up. Feel a stretch there and then when you're ready, downward dog. Downward dog feels super nice after you do a chaturanga. You'll appreciate it. So now I want you guys all to join me. So come to your feet, plant your hands, step back, high plank. And then this one will be quick because the mid plank hurts. So come down to a mid plank. Then quick flip, upward facing dog. Down, downward dog. So that's a chaturanga. You guys can come to your knees. Um, we're gonna do that a few times throughout our practice. Um, but now you guys know what it is. It's definitely something that's commonly used in yoga. So now you guys know, or maybe you already knew. So now we're gonna take a few cats and cows to begin with. So we're gonna start with a cow. Dip your tummy down, look up. Cow pose. Then you're gonna switch to cat pose. Tuck your tummy in, look down at your hands. Back is kind of up towards the sky. Cat pose. And don't forget your breathing. So inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. We will see if my cat decides to join us today. She's sitting on the couch. I think she's asleep. So. She might be not as interested this time as she was last time, but maybe she'll join. All right, so when you guys are ready, step back, dog or facing dog. From here, you can pedal out your calves. Might be a little tight from just sitting around. Take some stretches. Lean into your shoulders. All right, and then when you're ready, you're gonna either jump or step to your hands. So I'm just gonna take two big steps and I'm at my hands. Then you're gonna do a halfway lift, shine your heart forward, straighten your back, back down, forward fold. Then you're gonna rise up to a mountain pose. Get tall, reach your arms up, feel that there. Then you're gonna do a mini back bend. So you're gonna kind of goal post your arms out and look up to the sky. Open up your chest, reach back up. Then you're gonna sit in the chair pose and kind of sink your bottom down Find a kind of angle on your feet and then hands back to an airplane pose is what this is called. So airplane arms, kind of like you're taking off, sit low in that and then back up, mountain pose. Alrighty, now we're gonna do our first chaturanga, okay? So plant the hands down. Before you do a chaturanga, halfway lift, step back up, hands down, chaturanga time. Step back, high plank. Bend down, halfway plank. Up, upward facing dog. Down, downward dog. And that was your guys' first chaturanga, good job. All right, feel a stretch here. Hang on here for a second, it feels super good. Now, lift your left leg, this is called a three-legged dog. And then swing the left leg into your hands. All right, now you're gonna Sit in a high lunge, bend both legs so they're kind of both at a 90 degree angles. Feel the stretch here. And then when you're ready, launch up to your left foot. 
So this is going to be a balancing pose. So you're going to hold it in your left foot. Right foot is up at an angle. Hands to heart center. And just feel this here. Try to find your balance. Get something that is steady. Hold your ear. Whatever you need to do. If you can't find your balance, that's okay. Start practicing. And when you feel sturdy, we're going to do a figure four position. So it's going to stretch the hips. So take your foot that's up. Put it over your knee on your other foot. And then sit back. And you can feel the stretch in your hips. I'm not super flexible in this hip, which is okay. So yours might look different than mine. Um, but just sit back and feel that stretch. Point your toes a little bit, flex them towards your face if you need to feel it deeper. Find the balance here. Hands to heart center will help you. Chest is up, don't kind of sag down in it. Make sure you're up so you can feel the benefits the most. All right, after that, come back up, one-legged mountain. Now we're gonna do our second chaturanga. So down to the mat, halfway lift, reset, plant the hands, chaturanga. Step back, high plank. Lower down, mid plank, up, upward facing dog, feel this. Put it back down, downward facing dog. All right, now we're gonna do it on our other side, all right? So settle in here for a second, stretch out, and then raise your right foot high, up in the air, three-legged dog. And when you're ready, put it in between your hands. Eyes up, high lunge. Stay here for a second, make sure you're bent in both of your knees, and then rise up to your right leg. Find your balance here, hands are at center. And it's okay if you're not very good at balancing yet. You don't need to be, but it's worth trying. All right, then we're gonna put our leg to the last side, put your leg on top of your other, sit down, and feel the stretch in your hip. Remember to keep your chest up and lifted. Just kind of feel that. So you can do it a little bit lower to feel the stretch even more. And you feel good, come up. One legged mountain. Down, another chaturanga. So hands planted. Halfway lift, reset. Hands down, chaturanga. High plank. Mid plank. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Good job, guys. So now we're just going to take a little bit of stretches. Um, so we're going to raise our left foot high again. And then we're going to plant it outside of our hands. So kind of feel the stretch there. This is called a runner's lunge. This is what it looks like from the front. And just kind of lean into your hip. We're doing another hip stretch, which is good. Your hips get super tight from kind of sitting around all day. And if you can, if you're super flexible, go down to your elbows. I'm not that flexible, so I don't do that very often. This is enough of a stretch for me. So just find whatever feels good for you and benefits you. You can even like wiggle around a little bit, do some hip circles to get all stretched out. And when you feel pretty good, you're gonna flip your leg, have your toes pointed towards your face, so kind of flex them back, and then lean into your leg. So you're gonna feel a stretch on the back of your leg. So it's gonna be kind of hitting your calf and your hamstring, which gets super tight on me. And just lean into it so it's gonna look like this from the side. Not the cutest position, but <laughs> that's okay. All right. And after you feel pretty stretched out there, you're gonna step back again. We're gonna skip the chaturangas now, we're done with those. You guys did good. Step back to downward facing dog. We're gonna do the same stretches on the other side. So lift your right leg high, foot to the outside of your hands and stretch into this. This is called a runner's lunge. So runners typically get really tight in their hips, so this helps stretch out. And I run quite a bit, so I definitely feel that. And sometimes I do yoga where I do a lot of weights and cardio with it and stuff. Um, and sometimes I think I need that to work out, but 
sometimes your body just needs some stretching, which I think I need to give it more. So I'm glad I'm starting to do these videos with you guys because it helps me take a second to recognize that, yeah, my body needs this too instead of doing all the heavy weights and stuff like that. This is also just as good. And when you feel good there, flip your leg around, flex your toes your face and kind of lean in here. Feel the stretch in the back of your leg. I'm also curious about what other things you guys have been doing to stay active during this time. I know it's hard being in the house and not being able to, you know, go to soccer practice or run around on the playground and stuff. So I'm curious about what else you've been, you guys have been doing because I know I need to keep moving to feel less crazy. All right, so when you're done there, step your feet back. Back to downward dog. Feel the stretch here. One last downward dog. Breathe in. And exhale. All right. So that's all we're gonna do today. Um, you guys can come to a seat. At the end of yoga practices, typically you say the word namaste. Um, I guess I haven't done much research on why, what the word exactly means. But from my perspective, it is kind of like a way of thinking your body and your mind for kind of coming to your mat and thanking yourself for doing the practice that day and kind of just sending good energy to yourself but also to the world. Um, so from now on, one of these videos, we're gonna end by saying namaste. So, and my yoga teacher always says this phrase, so I'll say that to you guys, and then at the end, we're gonna put our hands to our heart center and then bow and say namaste, okay? So the light in me, sees and honors the light in you. We bow our heads and say, namaste. All right, thanks guys. I miss you guys so much. Stay healthy, stay safe. I'll see you soon.